I move the call towards the, the unit, you'll see the red light come on on signal level. And that's what you want to make sure you have a good signal level before you begin. That's the only time that light will work. During the grid process, actually recording the grid, this light won't work because it's not really needed. You're going to see everything at the end. So that's how you do a grid with the ArcGeo Mini. Now, I'm going to show you in the auto mode what it could do. Now, because I have this grid stored in here, I'd have to dump it out to the computer before I can do another one. This only stores one grid at a time. You have to you have to uh, export it out to your software so you can see it, save it, and then you can do another one. Uh, you do a download by hitting the download. Remember fast blinking, it's asking you, do you want to download? Say yes. When you do, that light will flash fast as it downloads. You see the data going out. And this is just to show you, give an example. Um, there's also a low memory. If you're doing a large grid and you're, this light comes on, then you need to finish that row that you're on and dump that and then continue on with a new grid. You can always join your grids together. Okay, now we're going to do the first row in manual again just to show you the auto mode and how the auto mode works. So we're going to take the first sample at the first position. Move our block, a coil, take the second one, take the third one, and at the fourth position you'll hear a double beep. Okay, now I'm going to switch to auto. Now the only thing about auto is when you get in your first position, you want to make sure that you walk walk the um, the grid out with each beep because each beep you hear is going to be a sampling of that position and it's once a second and it's kind of quick with the with a small coil like this but if you was walking it would be with a three foot coil or a um, a two box each time you take a, a a step would be a sample so here we go I'm going to press the button, the button it starts logging right away. One, two, three, and you heard the two beeps. That's in, that's in auto mode. Now I move back, hit the log button again, and it starts logging. Listen for the beeps. And you can always switch back to manual if you want and continue logging. which I just put back in manual mode just to give you an example log once log again log again and log again now let's say that's the that's the grid you want to do whichever size it was it makes no difference there's a button here called done when you finish with your grid you press done, it beeps three times, all the lights go off, and your grid is now in memory inside the unit. At that point, you'd want to take your unit, hook it to the computer, and dump the, uh, the grid to the uh, computer, and then you're ready to do another log. Okay, now I'm going to show you about the input select switch. This is a polarity switch that's used for uh, metal detectors. If you hook up a metal detector, for example, this Garrett XL500 has a polarity, it's a pulsed audio output. So if I move this coil close to the detector, you notice my signal level is not coming on. So I would take and put the position polarity position in the other direction and now you can see the red light coming on. That's the position you would use. You'd always want to check. Make sure you have a good audio signal coming out and your light on your signal level is lit 
before you start your grid. And for this particular detector, this is the position I would always use. Okay, this is the ArcGeo logger. Um, we're going to talk, go through the um, buttons and um, show you the controls off and on. This is the polarity. Remember, I talked to you about the polarity for uh, metal detectors, as you can see on the D. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see this. The D is showing 30. D is for data. G is for the grid, which it has a 10 by 2 in position 0, bank 0, grid 0. So if I switch this to 1, there's no grid in it, 0 by 0. And this is your Y. How many grids you have used, which is 1. And you can see this data shows 31. If I take and press this polarity, because my car is not over a piece of metal right now. Remember I told you about the polarity? If I press the polarity down, you see the data drop to zero. Now, when I move the coil over, you see the data go up. That's how the unit's supposed to work when you're in the right position for it. Uh, the mode. So, mode switch, auto manual switch for logging. This is your bank, which holds, you have four banks, zero through three, and you have four grids per bank. So in bank zero, I have four grids. If I used all three grids, I'd go to bank one, start back at zero. I have four grids I can put in bank one. I'm finished with those, I go to bank two and so forth. So I'm at bank zero, grid zero, which is that 10 by two. Uh, this is the log button, also used for yes. The delete button, which is also used for no. The new plot, this is your X and Y adjustment, grid size, download, and dummy value button and to erase the bank. When you press it, when you erase the bank, you erase all four grids within the bank position you have selected. And here is a charge and a charge LED. Headphone connection, if you choose to use it, signal input, and USB connection to the computer. This is your backlight off and on. So, since we have our grid already in, position 0 which is a 10 by 2 I'm going to go to the next position which shows none we're going to start off by making a new plot so we hit the new plot button and it asks you do you want to start a new plot yes now this is the Y and the X as I turn this you can see the value changing okay so we want to go, we'll do a 6 by, um, let's do a 6 by 4. RM is remaining memory within that bank, which is, you're not using much. You still have 97% memory. And the diagonal across this gr uh, grid 6 by 4 is a 7, which if, you're using yards, it'd be seven yards across. If you're using inches, it'd be seven inches across, and so forth and so on. So, let's go ahead and select that. Once you have your dial in setting of X and Y, then you can select it by yes, that's what I want to use. At that point, the display shows the log. It's at alpha, it's at log mode, and you currently want to log position 1 1. And that's the size of your grid that we just put in. And there's no data. So if we take and put the, the coil at 